Hello there, this is MathGuy.com. My name is Mark Karadimos. Today, we are going to be graphing linear inequalities. Now, these linear inequalities are in a different form than our last video. This is in, these are in, that I should say, uh, standard form. Uh, what is standard form? Standard form is when you've got both variables, the x and the y, both on one side of the equation, or an inequality in this case, and we've got the constant term, the non-variable, on the other side of the equation. Yep. All right, so I've explained how to do this with equations. Now we're going to do it with inequalities. Uh, slightly different, of course, with inequalities, but it's fairly uh, the same, very much the same. Uh, well, all right, where do we start? We start with making a table. Sometimes we call this t-table. Uh, I call this a little baby table because it's small. All right, we put a 0 in for x, and we're going to calculate what the y is. Now, remember, when we put in 0 for x, 6 times, I mean, actually, you know, before I actually get into the computation, actually, physically, picture putting in 0 there. Right, picture putting a zero right here. So it'd be six times zero is zero, and that was zero. In other words, this cancels. Zero minus y is just going to be minus y. So this whole term lands up canceling. The only thing you have here is a minus y. Now, for the purposes of what we're solving here, um, I'm actually going to be solving an equation. I, I want to know what the value is for y. So I'm not even looking at the inequality right now. I'm looking at an equality. So the last step for this particular problem is to figure out how to get y alone. So we're going to I mean, picture the coefficient really is negative 1 here. So we're going to divide both sides by negative 1. So we get y equals negative 1. So I'm going to put that value right here into the table. All right, I'm just going to get rid of this junk. So I'm going to put y equals negative 1 right next to that value. So I'm just going to back up a little bit, get that junk out of there, put negative 1 right there. Okay, so now let's do the same thing, but we'll, let's put in 0 for y. Now again, let's actually physically put in 0 here. Now we're going to put in a 0. Picture putting in the value 0 right there. So we have 6x minus nothing. So 6x minus nothing is just 6x. So it's like this thing disappears. So we're left with 6x equals 1. Yep, I'm just ignoring the inequality right now. I want to know what the value is for x. I don't care about shading at the moment. just want to figure out what the corresponding x value is. So, of course, what I'm going to do is divide by 6. So if you divide by 6, well, I get a fraction. I get 1 sixth, or I think that's 0.17, but whatever. It's a very small value, okay? So I'm going to put in 1 sixth into the table right over here. All right, just going to back up, get this junk out of the way. I got 1 sixth. Let's put that right there. All right, so what do I do? I graph them. So uh, keep in mind that these are separate points. This is one point. This is another point. So I'm going to graph each one of those points separately. All right, so let's graph the first one. 0, negative 1. Let's graph z uh, n uh, 1 sixth 0. So that's 1 sixth. It's just a tiny bit to the right, right? It's a very small decimal value right here, up 0. So it's going to be right here, just really close to the origin. Not the origin, but very close to it. All right, now I'm going to graph this. When we graph, keep in mind that we do have an inequality here. Uh, so there's going to be some shading. Notice that there is equality. So that means I'm going to be using a solid line. All right, so anytime there's a equal sign, we use a solid line. And that's what I'm going to do right now. Put that in black. So I'm going to put a solid line here. Almost missed those points. All right, so we've got our line. Now we got to figure out which side of the line to shade. Again, you could shade, um, I'm sorry, you could test any value you want off of this line. I always like using the origin if I can. Uh, it's the easiest point there is to use because calculating with zero is easy. Now, this line almost goes through this point. If the line goes through the origin, you can't use the origin. But this line doesn't go through the origin, so I'm going to use it. 
All right, so let's use it. Let's put in 0 for x, 0 for y. So I guess what I could do is go off over here on the side and show my work. So I get 6 times x minus y is less than or equal to 1. Okay, so I'm going to put that value 0, 0, 0 for x, 0 for y. 6 times 0, 0. 0 times negative 1, or, or I should say just the minus 0, if you're looking at it that way. In other words, I get 0 is less than or equal to 1. Is 0 less than or equal to 1? Yep, that is definitely true. That is the case. So, hmm, the origin is to the left side of this line, and the origin works. So therefore, I'm going to be shading everything on the left side, because the left side works. All right, so I'm going to get my black tool out here, and I'm going to shade everything to the left of that line. Okay, so everything over here, nothing on the right side gets shaded. Okay, let's graph the next one, because we're done with number one. All right, number two, same thing. We start off by making a baby table, or a very small T table. So our x value, our y value, we're going to put in 0 for x, 0 for y, and do some calculating. So, all uh, right, we're going to put in 0 for x. So imagine putting in 0 there. That's going to cancel out this term. So we're going to divide both sides by 3. We're going to get y equals. Again, I'm just looking at this like it's an equal sign. I'm temporarily suspending the uh, less than. I just want to know what the value is here. So I'll worry about the shading in a moment. So I get y equals 3. Just doing the math, I get y equals 3. Let me back up. So I put y equals 3 in the table. All right, likewise, let's do the same thing now for y. I'm going to go, I'm going to put in 0 for y. So let's see, I'm going to get, uh, well, let's do this in white to be consistent. So I'm going to get, uh, oh, well, I guess I don't have to do that. 3 times 0 is 0. This term cancels out. So I get 2x equals 9. Again, I'm just thinking that like an equal sign at the moment. So I divide both sides by 2. I get x equals 4.5. Right? That's half of 9. Or 9 halves if you prefer. But since I'm going to be graphing this in a number line, I'd like to use a decimal. All right, so I get 4.5. So I'm going to put that in there. Get rid of this junk. 4.5. Let's put that right there. 4.5. All right, now we graph the two points. So let's graph the first one, 0, 3. So 0 on the x-axis, 3 up. Uh, let's see, we got 4.5x. Technically, I should be using an open circle, and I'll explain why in a second. Uh, okay, 4.5 to the right, 0 up. I should put you open circle. All right, now the reason why I'm using open circles and not closed circles, like on the last one here, I use closed circles. You see those closed circles there. I'm using open circles because there is no equality. There's no equal sign. If there's no equal sign, there's really no line. All we really have is the border. The border exists. I mean, I, I have to show that there's some type of border. But we don't, the border is actually not part of the problem. We're going to be shading some side of the line, but we're not going to include the line. Like over here, we included the line for problem number one because there was an equal sign. Okay? If there's an equal sign, you include the border. All right, no equal sign, no border. So I'm going to shade now one side. Now to determine which side to shade, you're going to have to use a test point. Yep, I know I'm getting boring. I'm using the same points over and over again, but I'm going to use 0, 0 as my test point. So I go back to my equation, and I put in, let's see, 2 times x. I put 2 times x plus 3 times y is less than 9. All right, again, I'm using 0 for x, 0 for y. Oh, 2 times 0, 0. 3 times 0, 0. 0 plus 0, 0. Is 0 less than 9? Hmm, yep, 0 is definitely less than 9. 
So it turns out that this point is the correct side. It works. The equation works when I, when I put in this test point. So what I want to do is now shade the side that works, and we found out that the origin does work. So we shade below the line for this particular problem. Okay, so that's how we do it. Sometimes we use dashed lines, sometimes we use solid lines, depending on what the problem looks like. All right, make sure you go back to mathguide.com. We have uh, thorough lessons, interactive quizzes, and uh, a bunch of other videos. Thanks. Have a great day.